welcome to your favorite show of culinary delights we are delighted to still have you on board and today on the show we are going to also do something else to add up your recipes at home and we're gonna do something unique because we've been having a lot of uh, views and opinions from our viewers that you wish us to do something like that on the show so you just have to join me your connoisseur Khadija Zimbo, and learn about this new recipe that we're going to work on today Previously with Elliot Pinto, the cake artist from Dots Cup Cakery, we started covering our base of red velvet cake with smooth white fondant. And today we'll continue giving our cake some few more details. It looks so soft, everything, the angles are all sharp. Once this is done, uh -huh. just run your smoother around the cake just to get the nice, rounded, smooth edges on this. Okay. Then we have the cake done. perfectly done. Okay. Now over here... Do you have something else to do? Yeah. Basically what I'll just do is like a simple bow. Show you how to make a bow. Mm -hmm. This is just all, this is like a basic design. Now okay. over here you can always do something else. If it's mm. for a boy, if it's for a girl, mm. you can do. But this is the basic way how to cover a cake in Okay, that's beautiful. So I will just show you now how to make some Decorations. decorative stuff like a bow and something just to bring out the color in the cake. Okay, great. Okay, okay let's see that. So now once this is done, you can just push the cake to the side. Mm -hmm. I chose to use orange color, so again, as you see, this is quite hard. It's so hard. It's hard. So you need you to can it no, to You microphone. will not be able to knead this by itself. <laughs> so that's why you need to warm it up. Every microwave. Day. You have to have a microwave. So here we go. It's too soft, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. We can work with this. Mm -hmm. So same process, you have to knead it, make sure it's like pliable, mm -hmm. nice. So these are basically just the normal food colors that you normal added. Normal food colors, used. it's always best to use gel colors. Gel colors. Instead of liquid colors. Why? Gel colors, it's a nice thick gel. Liquid is like water. You will not get such nice radiant colors. Mm. It will be too liquid, it will make the fondant too wet, mm. it will be sticky. Mm -hmm. So it's always best to use gel colors. I think that's something else that people yeah. have been not exactly. being aware of it uh, at home because we've seen people trying to make yeah. fondant In, but they were kind of wetty, yeah. you know, soggy soggy and all yeah. that. But yeah, perhaps this is another yeah. solution for them to work on. For buttercream you can use any liquid colors, that's mm. fine. So here we have the gel color. So this is. You want to add up a little I bit. I want to make it a bit more brighter orange. Mm -hmm. So you need to add little by little. You don't mm. need to put too much. Like I poured and a lot fell out, but it's fine. Mm. So basically, here what I'm doing is just mixing the color mm. in the fondant. Mm -hmm. You can see it changing, becoming yeah, a nice darker it's, yeah, color. It's even but in, in like at the moment, which type of colors are mostly used? Actually, so far in this year, which colors uh, are we've had so a lot of, of recently. We've had a lot of pink, purple, and white cakes. Pink, purple, pink, and, purple white. and white. Wow. A lot of. Oh, so that the 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 because uh, they're basing on what's the color of the year. Sometimes. Because you yeah. know the color of the year. Exactly. It's it's purple. Yeah. For for 2014, it's purple. It's purple. Yes. So definitely, people are now updated yeah. on what should exactly. we have. So it, it, it is purple and pink. It is That's purple. the year, the, purple the color of the year. Purple and pink also matches well together. Yes. Yeah. So we've had a lot of purple, purple and, pink and pink and, and white. white. Yeah. Oh, people are so, so, so mm. going in time. So now we want to make a small, like a bow. Mm -hmm. Just a bow. Same thing. But another thing I want you to also tell us, once you decorate a cake, it doesn't matter if it's fondant mm -hmm. or if it's in the normal frosting or if it's in normal icing. Mm -hmm. What type of a cake is more, you know, attractive? 
do we need a cake with complex kind of decorations on top or we need something just little bit that which looks smart and elegant yeah. we have uh, some customers come in and like look at the fondant cakes and go wow mm. some customers do not like they see all this and all this is just icing sugar mm. so they don't like it as much mm. but uh, basically like a uh, fondant decorated cake is more attractive than a buttercream cake so mm -hmm. it's I think you can also give us a tips on colors at times people don't know which colors exactly. goes together with the other yes sometimes people choose pink and uh, yellow mm -hmm. people choose like orange and green mm -hmm. yeah bright I've seen a colors. lot of that yeah bright colors now when they tell me something like that orange and green mm. orange and green actually goes well yes but you cannot have a bright orange and a bright green mm -hmm. you need to balance it out you mm. either have a nice like leaf color green mm -hmm. and a not such a bright orange then mm. it will look perfect together mm -hmm. so it's always I mean you need to even have an art mm. you need to have an artistic mind to do a cake because mm -hmm. you cannot just do yellow and blue and purple and green and, and all, all at the all, all the at, the, at the same stage yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah, you cannot have that okay so making a bow okay making a bow basically this is it you roll out smooth it as you know yeah. now as w when you do white fondant even if you have a lot of icing sugar on it it doesn't matter because the sugar is white mm. the fondant is white mm -hmm. but when you have colors yeah you should it's kind of tricky yes, you have to that. like wipe keep on wiping the top off like mm. wiping the icing sugar off mm. at the bottom it's okay if you have that because it has to be mm. like it has to, it doesn't need to stick it doesn't need to so making a bow, the first thing you need to make is the bow itself. Okay. So to, in order to do that, you mm. need to cut like, this depends on the size of the bow you want. Mm -hmm. So maybe for here I'll do a bow which is this, this big. Height, this big. Uh -huh. So you just measure roughly like you know the thickness of it and you cut, it into cut that. a strip of the foam. Mm -hmm. Now to make a bow, mm -hmm. I always make the first half like one half and the other half mm -hmm. separately. Separately. I would I never make a bow all together by itself. Okay. Because making it all together by itself will turn out to be kind of flat mm. and not standing out as much <laughs> as making each piece by itself. Okay. It's a lot more work, but I mean the end product looks more better. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the how I need it to be. This mm -hmm. is one half mm -hmm. and this should be another half. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I just roughly measure like this is one half mm -hmm. and the next this is half. The other half. So what I do is this is your piece. Mm -hmm. Join the two together. Take take the first half mm -hmm. and make these folds mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm basically fold and press mm -hmm. and the same thing you do with the other fold and press, and press and then you just join these two together wow and there you have your one half one half of, of a bowl you can just leave it like this it will dry mm -hmm. same thing you do with the other half basically what it is you take the first pinch it this way mm -hmm. and then take this and fold it in and, then you and pinch take it. this and fold it in Make sure the edges are folded inwards, mm -hmm. not outwards. outwards. And then just pinch it, you will get these kind of folds mm -hmm. and just join it together. There it goes. And there you have it. Then you stick. Yeah. Then what them I'm doing together. is just like trying to join them together. Mm. And now we need to make the middle. So for the middle, mm -hmm. just cut another strip of fondant not so big because this just needs to go around it. yeah this much and what I do is the same thing but now folding I fold all the fold, way all the way yeah, all the way just try and get like a nice nice fold this doesn't have to be perfect mm -hmm. it should look a bit like cloth <laughs> make it real yes. Maybe this is too thin. Mm -hmm. Let's just get another 
thicker one. to set for some time okay we have to eventually cut this off uh -huh. now what I want to do here is make the pose like the lace the, the other lace. type yeah. uh -huh. the other part so I have this piece just cut it in half equally and cut this and then you have this which will come on the side mm -hmm. so basically here what I'm doing is just cutting it like a ribbon. Mm -hmm, like like a ribbon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the other one. Whenever you cut, make sure the edges are, are nice sharp. and sharp and mm -hmm. smooth. So yeah. we leave them to set for, for like a couple of no, minutes? No, just a few minutes. All mm -hmm. I wanted was to just make sure I have all the parts ready uh -huh. so that when I start putting it on the cake, mm. I don't have to put and leave it and make something else. Mm. Make sure you have everything done. Mm -hmm. So, now it comes the part of sticking it on the cake. Mm -hmm. So, you just choose like maybe the bow will stay on the front of the cake or mm. on maybe on one side of the cake. Mm. It's fine. Mm -hmm. So, all you need to do is just measure out like the bow is this size. Mm -hmm. This I'll need it to stay here mm -hmm. and this part I'll need it to stay here mm -hmm. so you already know where this is staying so all I do is just put a little water you don't need to put too much water <laughs> you need to put just a little just a little yeah, just support a little. the sticking so that it should stick mm -hmm. that's why you need a brush mm -hmm. so just stick this like that and let this take its shape and make folds mm -hmm. so it looks realistic. Mm -hmm. Don't put it together because the bowl itself is big. Mm -hmm. So if you put it together, so there you go. Just make sure this sticks well. This part, I think like this much should be enough. So mm -hmm. I need to trim this off. Again, put some water mm -hmm. and stick it here. Okay. Like this. Nice tie. Looks so real. It. There you have it, your tie. Mm -hmm. Now for this, put some brush some water mm. just on the base of the cake yeah. itself where you want the bow to stick mm. not too much and always remember when you're brushing a colored mm. piece of fondant mm. on a white fondant with water mm. try not to like mix it together <laughs> because the color will come off from the fondant and from the colored one and then and go to the go white, on the white oh. one. so that's why also you have to that's use going to be a mess just the right amount of water so what I do is just place it on, yeah. never press too hard because if you press too hard <laughs> it will tend to be flat. So just, you lose the yeah. shape and everything. That's why we say you need to have time and be patient. patient. So there you have it, just stick it. Beautiful. Okay. Before starting your cake, before doing anything, you need to plan out exactly what, what are the steps you're going to do, how you're going to do everything. Mm -hmm. You don't want to reach halfway and then sit and think, okay, oh, no, this is yes. this thing, and then you go back yes, to it. I need to do this, and maybe <laughs> I should have done this. Yeah. I always plan out, that is why I ask so many of the customers to let me know in advance. Mm -hmm. Let me know in advance the cake, then in my mind I plan out, okay, 
this is the design, I'm going to do it this way, this way, this way. Mm -hmm. I have it all planned out in my head. Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing the cake, sometimes it never works out. It, most of the time, it doesn't work out exactly how I planned it. But still, mm -hmm. at least the basic plan is there. Okay. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is, with this remaining fondant, just make a number one mm -hmm. and just set it up right on top of the cake. Mm -hmm. Simple and elegant. It is, yes. very elegant and very attractive too. Yeah. So, same process again, mm -hmm. you need to set all this aside. Mm -hmm. You see the fondant tends to like mm -hmm. become hard, you yes, cannot, it's hard. not pliable yes, enough. It's not. So you have to yeah. put it back. So microwave again. Microwave. The more you microwave the fondant, mm -hmm. the more when you microwave the fondant, mm -hmm. it becomes soft. You need to use more icing sugar. Mm -hmm. The color will start fading. The colors of because icing sugar is white, mm -hmm. so you're mixing white in a dark color, it will start fading. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that if you're doing any dark colors, never microwave it for a long, time, a long time that you need to use so much icing sugar it has to be just done few seconds at a time mm. until it's pliable that you don't need to use too much icing sugar because if i do this for 30 seconds mm. it will become really soft mm -hmm. to make it harder again i need to add more icing, more sugar. icing sugar it will lose the color i thought perhaps you could add again the icing you can color. add again but it never you will like it will not always, be the same. You will always either get it too dark or too light and then yeah, you know it will it's, not be the same. Yeah, you it will, will be, be like cold with the other exactly. Part. You will be doing the whole process again and it's more work. Mm. So you see this is pliable enough. I mm. didn't have to add more icing sugar. Mm. I just need to make it nice and smooth. Mm. Take my rolling pin, make sure you have enough of icing sugar here, not too much. Mm -hmm. Remember you're working with a colored piece of fondant. So you cannot have, always when you're rolling your fondant, make sure there's enough icing sugar down. Mm -hmm. Roll just a bit, turn it and roll, turn it and roll, keep turning and rolling. Mm -hmm. Now for this, I'm going to cut out uh, number one. Number one. So. This is a number one cookie cutter, which is the perfect size for this. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is, normally, when you cut a number one, this is just straight. Yeah. So if you leave the piece of fondant, you need to cut it at least a nice thick, thicker, maybe double this size. Okay. This is too thin. Mm -hmm. So if you cut it that thick, then you can just leave this piece like for even an hour, it dries, then you, all you do is just stick it here and it stays. Wow. But sometimes when you have like a number two, mm -hmm. That number two is this way. Mm -hmm. So you have this top part which has no support underneath. Mm -hmm. So you need to use, like put either skewer mm -hmm. in between mm -hmm. and poke that into the cake. Um. Then the skewer will hold the shape. Okay. Because then if it is too hot, mm -hmm. the number two will start, yeah, start going down. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is, I put a skewer, I'll put a skewer in between this, in this number one, mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. Normally what everyone does is just cut a number one and poke this inside. Okay. But then once you poke it inside, you can start seeing the shape of the skewer. Mm. Then you will see <laughs> the line of the skewer in the number one, which I don't like to do. He just wants to do it perfectly. Yes. So what That's I do problem. is make it not so thick and not so thin. Mm -hmm. And I cut two number ones. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. and two. When, once you cut it, make sure your edges are nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Then what I do is put them on top of each other mm -hmm. and the skewer goes right in between. Okay. And then once you put this on top of each other, you will not see the skewer line. Mm -hmm. you won't. So first you need to just measure the skewer needs to go in the cake. Mm -hmm. So you measure like this much goes in mm -hmm. and this much will come out. Mm -hmm. So you need this much, mm -hmm. take a scissor. Never poke any metal 
or any wires or anything directly into a cake because that's not food safe. Mm -hmm. These skewers are bamboo and mm -hmm. they're used for mishkaki, so yeah. they're food safe. Okay. So this is fine. Sometimes you have some, even if you're using like a aluminium piece or a metal piece, like sometimes when you make flowers, you need mm -hmm. to use a metal piece inside. Mm -hmm. You need to cover that with floral tape. Mm -hmm. Fro floral tape also is fine if it touches on the cake, okay. but never poke any metal directly into a cake because it's not food safe and it's not good. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is just brushing the back side, the front side of one number one, mm -hmm. which will be at the bottom. Mm -hmm. This one I'm brushing the bottom no, side. I put my skewer on the bottom, take this one and stick it right on the top. Don't press it with your hand, mm -hmm. use this mm -hmm. and press it and it's smooth. Then just shape it off. If you find it's losing its shape, just shape it off nicely with this, not with your hand. Wow. Once that is done. There you have it. Now see, it holds. Yeah, it, it stays holds. nicely. Even if it's not dry enough, mm. it holds and just... Slice it up the middle. Put it in. Put it in the cake. Make sure you shape it nicely. Mm -hmm. There it comes. And you are done. Voila! That's very yeah. cute. Very elegant. Something that it actually it looks very attractive yes. rather than it's very simple. having a lot of decorations a lot on of, it. Yes. This is so cute. I know the number ones are not that much, you know, knowing what's, what's going yes, on. But I'm sure exactly. once you just look at it, yeah. definitely just wow, sorry. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so is now, so beautiful. this is like the basic cake is covered, mm -hmm. but I don't like to leave it this way. Okay. You see the edges, the bottom part here, you can still see the yeah. board. Yeah. You can still see the foil, the yeah. boards are covered in yeah. foil. Mm -hmm. So I like to cover it in ribbon. And ribbon. Yeah, okay. Okay. So you see, it's all covered. It all looks nice. Mm -hmm. It looks. Like you cannot see the board. No, you can't see the board. So what I do is basically just any container or anything that's mm -hmm. smaller than the cake. Mm -hmm. So I have enough room like to put it nicely. Mm -hmm. Placing the ribbon here and taking it all around the cake, all around the board. And that's it. So you see, you cannot see the board. No, you can't you see. You cannot see. You just it's feel just you, when you look at it. You just feel yourself into the world yes. of the cake. There's nothing else there but just the cake. Exactly. Now this is done. Now, what you can do is just brush off any excess icing sugar that's there on the cake, on the icing, on the fondant. Mm -hmm. Just brush it off. And if you see, the fondant has already started to harden. Mm, yeah. So it's quite... This will not harden mm -hmm. because it has a soft cake It has under a it. soft cake under so it. So this will... Many people ask me, is this hard? Is the icing really hard? Mm. But the cake icing will not... Like the fondant that's on the cake will not harden. Yeah. This is just by itself, so this will become hard. So where do you write the name? Now, you can... I have cookie cutters. Uh-huh that have like round shapes or different like a flower shape or something. Uh -huh. Maybe I can just do one now. Okay. Roll out your fondant again. Make sure it's smooth. Take the cutter. You can take, as you see, there are so many sizes. Mm -hmm. I prefer this one. Just press. And cut it out. Mm -hmm. Make sure you Smooth out the edges. Mm -hmm. 
I have these edible markers. Oh, okay. Yeah. These really come in handy, so if you can get them, mm. if you can get your hands on these markers, mm. I would suggest you do that because instead of piping mm. or sometimes instead of painting, mm -hmm. you can use these. They're all food writers. Okay. So you have all these different kinds of different colors, mm. different sizes. There are these which are thin ones. Mm. You see, you have the bright ones. Okay. So I got all these colors. For this one, I'll just write in a black. Okay. So I have this. I'll just use this one. Mm -hmm. It's the thing. Now, for writing on the fondant, mm -hmm. your fondant has to be quite firm, mm -hmm. hard enough, so that to when you write, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that when you write, it doesn't press in too much. Okay. So basically here what we'll do is just a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. So make sure you center your words mm -hmm. and you do it nicely. Wow. So that is done. Mm -hmm. and put it on then the water. Just to like make it look a bit more attractive, you can just poke some holes mm. into here. Anything, whatever you feel like. Wow. This is so cute. This is so Cute, you know, but just looking at it, you'll just be very much tempted, you know, finding more details about it. It's very, very attractive. It's yeah. so clean, like, there's no bumps, there's nothing, and the colors are just there, as simple yeah. as we have been talking about in the show so far. I have nothing much to say. <laughs> I'm speechless because yeah. I love, love details, yeah. but there's tiny details that carry exactly. the whole meaning. Exactly. The more details you put into the cake, the more... The more rough it becomes. Yes. So I'll just keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. Keep it as elegant as possible. Make sure you get like all the small details. Like you see, using this to make this, it brings out the... the instead of just being a plain rounded yeah. piece, it makes it look a bit more better. It brings dimension to it. So, it's so beautiful. There's really small details sometimes that make but a huge a lot. difference. That means a lot. That means a lot. Thank you so much, Elia. You have been amazing. Thank I've been you. having fun throughout this whole show. Yes. I don't know Thank because you. I love cakes. I don't know. But I hope my viewers as well, they've learned and enjoyed the show too. The only thing you need to do right now is just talk to me through my email address, which is culinary.reliance at capitaltv.co.tz. Keep on following us on Facebook and Twitter and the YouTube account and it's very good for you to follow the shows on YouTube because you'll be able to get the recipes from one step to the other so you enjoy yourself then keep on watching Capital TV thank you for being part thank of the show thank you so much